Mac Voices Holiday Gift Guide number four with Brittany Smith, Joe Kissel, and Mike Schmitz. This is Mac Voices. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Rocket Money. Take full control of your subscriptions with Rocket Money at rocketmoney.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this is another holiday gift guide. We do as many of these as we can during the holiday season because it's always fun to get together with our friends and talk tech and talk products and just in general, enjoy each other and have a good time. Uh, so you guys probably all know the rules. We do four rounds, one one gift pick per round. So you end up with 16, give or take, um, items uh, to, to choose from. Um, and also, it's important to note that uh, not only are the links to those products in the show notes to this episode, but also there's a master list on the Mac Voices website, and we're also publishing our 2022 Mac Voices gift guide uh, Flipboard magazine. So you can actually get to see some of the images right there in Flipboard, flip through it. And of course, if you don't have Flipboard on your iOS or iPad OS device, you can still find that list on the web. They're both the same. They just are presented in a little different fashion. So let's see who's here for this panel, and then we'll get right to the good stuff. Um, first up, and I'll take my screen like I always do, Brittany Smith has joined us. Brittany, it's great to have you. Thanks for having me, Chuck. It's always always a pleasure to see you sitting up there in the corner of my screen. Sitting down in the corner of my screen, um, Mr. Mike Schmitz has arrived. Mike, good to have you. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. And last but absolutely not least, Joe Kissel, the, the boss of Take Control Books, is here to enlighten us. Joe, welcome. Hello. Nice to be here. Good to have you. So let's just dig right in. Um, and if it's okay with you all, we'll just keep the same order and uh, start round number one. So, Britt, that gives you the first pick of this gift guide. Okay, so I know this is on a theme of things that have been picked, but it's not exactly it. And that counts, right, Chuck? Sure, sure. Okay, so I am normally a devotee, a, a loyalist of Anchor Chargers, and, and they have not been putting out one I want. In fact, I recommended one I liked last year, I think. Um, and, and they just haven't been keeping up with my needs, so I took a chance on a third party and it hasn't broken down yet. So I assume it's okay. And <laughs> it's some no name brand. I've got the link for you, Chuck, but what it is, is it's when you plug into the wall and then it's got a long cable and then it's got the little part that deals out the juice and it's three USB A and three USB C because as time has passed, one USB is not adequate for my needs. So that way I can charge my, computer slowly and my iPad and whatever other one I want, maybe my watch, maybe for my phone to charge a little faster. And, and I've been enjoying it. Oh, you say nobody makes one that is adequate for your needs. You mean I, in number? Anchor has not been making one that I wanted. Ah, okay. Okay. All right. Well, so, that's, hey. It didn't have the right balance of plugs for me. Well, everybody needs to charge their stuff. So, you know, as I, I personally like to go with the brands that, you know, you know, um, but if you've used this one and tested it out, that's a pretty good recommendation. So yeah, if, if you want a different arrangement of USB-A to USB-C and you have a zillion devices like I do, give it a try. <laughs> and there's nobody on this panel that has a zillion devices. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. We're off to a good start. Mike, what are you going to take us in for round one? Uh, well, I think I'm going to recommend this as a very uh, very specific gift. Um, but if you know anyone who plays guitar, I'm going to recommend the Spark Mini Practice Amp. Uh, this I have the larger version of this. It's a uh, essentially a practice amp that syncs with the Positive Grid software, and Positive Grid is the company behind BiasFX and a lot of like really high quality studio musician plugins that you would play through if you're playing through your computer, for example, a lot of really great modeling. And so you uh, pair this Bluetooth to your iPhone or your iPad, and then you open up the, the, the app on your iOS device, 
and you get access to, I think there's 33 different amp simulations and 43 different effects, in addition to being a pretty decent sounding practice amp. Uh, the Mini is unique in that it is very tiny and compact and actually battery powered. So you can take this thing, you don't even have to, ha don't even have to plug it in to, to the wall and it'll give you eight hours of, of uh, practice time. So they've got a, a bigger version, like I said, I've been using for a long time. This one actually just came out and uh, I've been tempted by this, but I feel like if I had a choice between buying the bigger one or this one now, I would definitely go with this one because it's so compact and you can just grab it, and take it pretty much anywhere. Hmm. That's interesting. I don't think I knew about the smaller one. I think I, I've talked to someone about the larger one, but I don't think I've heard about the smaller one. Yeah, um, I know I've written about the larger one. Um, I have an article over on the Sweet Setup about how I actually played through my iPad live for a while at, with the worship team at my church. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in that. But um, this is kind of the ideal practice scenario. So I've got like my home office here and I don't want to have a crazy setup here. Uh, I, I don't like plugging in extra things to my computer. I feel like the more things I plug in through the dock, I run everything through my MacBook Pro. It just every once in a while, things act a little weird. So I try not to do that. I have a, you know, I want a separate amp that I can plug into, but I still like being able to control all the sounds and play with all the effects and things like that. I don't want to have to carry all that stuff back and forth from my church all the time. So this is kind of the ideal practice uh, solution for me. But this, this smaller one, I, I love that this is battery powered uh, because occasionally <clears throat> we've got a, my parents have a place two hours from here up in Door County. So we'll go up there for a couple of days, go visit them. And it's always a pain. Like, do I have the right charges? Do I have the right, right cords? And it would be great to be able to just grab this thing and know that this is going to last me the entire time that I'm up there. Great. Nice pick. Nice pick for the, for all the guitarists out there. Both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, are Me you and Brett are going to like this at least? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's there, there too. We got it. Joe, I don't even know. Do, do you play anything? Uh, uh, keyboards. Keyboards. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well then the practice amp probably isn't for you, but you know, probably not. No. Yeah. So what do you got for the first round? Well, as, as usual, I like make my list of things that I think would be cool to recommend. And then I look at everything that previous guests have recommended. And I assumed, I was certain that the thing that I was going to recommend would be on that list. And I was shocked that nobody has yet recommended this. So, okay, I'll be the one. Um, it's this little plastic disc. Uh, this This is the... Uh, Belkin iPhone mount with MagSafe. It comes in black and white. I happen to get the black one. This is that thing that Apple announced back at uh, WWDC where you can attach this to your iPhone and then clip it to the back of your uh, laptop screen so that it's in the correct position to use the new continuity camera feature with Ventura so that you can use your iPhone as a webcam. And uh, we all have, we probably all have iPhones and Mac laptops. So uh, if you want a convenient way to clip your camera to your Mac so that you can use it uh, as a webcam, then this little gadget, uh, which you can buy from Belkin or you can buy from Apple uh, is the one, uh, like I say, it comes in black and white and there's a little thing on the back, you, you, you flip it out. And, and this little, it's hard to see, but this little bottom part, um, hooks over the back of your screen um, and holds, and then your your uh, your phone clips on with MagSafe to this side. Um, and uh, there's also a little hooky thing that you can uh, hold down. So you can you can use this just as a, as a stand for your iPhone, or you can kind of put your finger through there and use it to, to hold on to your iPhone um, without gripping it. So this is only for laptops. Belkin says that in the future, there will be a version of this uh, for desktops and, and standalone displays and so forth. But if you have a Mac laptop and an iPhone, you want to use that feature to get a really nice webcam. Uh, this thing's like 30 bucks and uh, very compact and handy. 
Very nice. Yeah, we've we've had a couple folks who've been using continuity camera here for some of the shows, and it's pretty impressive. It seems, at least, it seems to be pretty bulletproof so far. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty nice. Good, great pick, great pick. So, Joe, I'm kind of like you. There, there are items on my list that I sort of leave because I feel like they're low-hanging fruit, and I'm just waiting for somebody else to pick them. This has not been picked yet, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it, and that is. Get yourself an M1 or M2 MacBook Air or MacBook Pro. The pricing on these, I mean, it seems like I'm seeing discounts all the time. We'll see more probably over the holidays. And these are just phenomenally powerful machines. They're they're modern machines, um, so they will run the latest operating systems, obviously, and probably will for quite some time into the future. And the odds are that if you're not... If you're not doing serious video work or really, really serious photography, um, you probably have more than enough power in these to go for years because they are just they are just amazing. The battery life is incredible. There's just nothing not to like about any of the M1s. And I just said MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, but also the M1, I uh, can't say it, iMac or the M1 Mac Mini. Um, any of those are really, really great values for the money for what you're getting. And now it's pretty well established that we're not going to see revisions for any of the Macs until well after the first of the year. So if you need something and need it now, or if you just want to take advantage of some great pricing, go out and buy one of these. Uh, it just, the, the difference between that and my old Intel machines is just staggering. Um, the, the difference you're getting for the dollars and in performance. And you don't even have to buy one of the uh, pros or ultras. Just the, the basic M1 is really, really intense when it comes to uh, capabilities. So that's it. Pick whichever one you want, but definitely get something with an M1 chip. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Rocket Money. Cancel unnecessary subscriptions today with Rocket Money at rocketmoney.com slash macvoices. Are you wasting money on subscriptions? 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. Maybe for you it's an unused Amazon Prime account, or a Hulu account that never gets streamed, or a magazine subscription that you're still paying for. Is that even a thing anymore? There's this great app that helps you track all of your expenses, and because of it, you will no longer waste money on subscriptions you don't even use. Subscriptions of any kind that you don't even use. You may have heard of it. It's called Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. Rocket Money shows all your subscriptions in one place and cancels what you don't want for you. Rocket Money can even help you find subscriptions you didn't know you were paying for. You may even find out that you've been double charged for some subscriptions. To cancel a subscription, all you have to do is press cancel and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash macvoices. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash macvoices. Rocketmoney.com slash macvoices. Thanks to Rocket Money for supporting this week's Mac Voices. So that wraps up round one. That was a quick round one. So let's hit uh, round two. Brittany, you're up. I do want to second yours. I did do video editing on um, M1 Air for a year before I caved and bought this one. So. Yeah. It, it, was, it was fine. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to stick with the MagSafe theme. Um, I, when I do my uh, Jedi yoga videos, it is a multi-cam, no joke, like every height, every angle, got it covered, which means I need a ton of iPhones all mounted together. But if I set up my real phone as one of the, the cameras, which of course I should do, cause it's got a better camera than the others. Uh, any slight change and I have to reset up everything because you know how tripods are where they're kind of finicky and it's a pain to get your phone off and on. So I found a MagSafe one. And so you just put it on top of a tripod and it's MagSafe and you just make sure it doesn't tilt. And it's just so much less of a pain to get on and off your real phone so you can go and use it. So that's, that's um, my pick is a MagSafe uh, tripod mount for your phone. Very nice. Very nice. 
Yeah, Ma- MagSafe is so convenient and so secure. I mean, it's not like you have to really worry about it. And you know, as, as I, I, for certain situations, I still like the you know the clips um, that really grip your phone. But in, unless you're going to be moving things around, MagSafe is more than sufficient. So yeah, nicely done. Nicely done. Mike, MagSafe to to MagSafe or not to MagSafe? <laughs> not to MagSafe. Although okay. I had on my list the one that Joe picked with the Belkin mount, so I second <laughs> that recommendation. <laughs> no, it's oh, cool. Oh, we have a steel. I love it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to recommend the Hydrate Spark Pro water bottle, which is this one right here. It's a Bluetooth enabled water bottle. It has a puck in the bottom, which unscrews that you can charge lasts about a week. And what it does is when you set it, set it down, it, it measures, it takes the weight, you calibrate it, the weight empty versus the weight when it's full. And then every time it stops moving, that signals the app to check the levels basically. And as you drink your water, it will log uh, the number of ounces that you've drank in a day. There's a little uh, marker on this, this Hydrate Spark app. Uh, there's a widget for this. So I actually have this on my my home screen and I can basically see how much water I've drank in, uh, in a day. Now, I know some people maybe don't think this is a really big deal. I think this is really, really important. It's made a big difference for me with my health. Just simply drinking enough water makes me feel way better. I used to struggle with headaches all the time. Those like instantly went away when I started. <laughs> Brittany reaches to take a drink. Very nice. <laughs> um, so what it, uh, when you fall behind, uh, what it does is the bottom of this thing has a light. I'm going to try to trigger this on the, uh, the call here, but this basically will light up. There it goes. So as this is sitting on your desk, basically that it'll light up if you've fallen behind and that's your reminder basically to take a drink. Um, and it keeps track of your streaks and everything. Um, let me see. At one point I had a streak of like 200 days in a row or something like that, but it really does make a difference. This is something that I struggled with. I always knew like I should drink more water, but I couldn't, whatever reason, never remind myself to do it. Uh, getting this water bottle has completely changed that. And I've used this one now for the last couple of years. I probably recommended this last year, the year before when I did the gift guide, but I recommend this to everybody I come in contact with basically in real life. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a, it's a great water bottle. Interesting. It was, it was fun to watch Brittany's face when you were suggesting it. I, I, I was trying to read her and then she picked up her water bottle to drink. So <laughs> <laughs> You want to confess anything, Brittany, or just? <laughs> oh, I think Brittany froze. Yep, she's. I frozen. think that's an admission just in case of guilt. I <laughs> it, uh, if you do need one, one that's organic and built in is amazing. So, yeah, yeah it's a lot more natural. So now I've got a water bottle that'll tell me to drink. I've got a watch that'll tell me to stand. What's next? Okay. It's kind of sad that you need all these reminders, right? <laughs> so, so, so speaking of water and being frozen and standing, here here in Canada, it's it's winter. Never mind what your calendar says, it's winter. There's snow on the ground, uh, there's snow on top of ice, and it's unlikely to get above freezing between now and April. So um, when when snow when 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 you get like a layer of ice and a layer of snow, uh, walking can be treacherous. So uh, I picked up some some things to oh they're they're kind of velcroed together. All right, so I picked up some things to stick on the bottom of my shoes to give me more traction. Now there are lots of different brands and styles and so forth. These ones are called ice trekkers. Ice Trekkers. Now uh, that's a brand name, and this this particular model that I have is the Spike, and it has these little like a bunch of these little t- you can't really see, but tungsten carbide uh, spikes sticking out of the bottom to give you traction when you're walking on 
ice. Now, uh, these these are the cheap ones. They're just like rubber with the spikes in the bottom and you, you slip them on your shoes and Velcro and, and done. So they're super easy and quick to put on, take off. Um, if you need something heavier duty, they have actual chains and they have like, you know, diamond stud things like they have, they have much more elaborate versions of this that uh, are, are for sort of heavier duty situations. Light duty is fine for me and, uh, and you know, inexpensive and, and easy. Uh, these, I don't know, they're like 20, 30 bucks, something like that. Uh, and of course you can get them from Amazon, the usual places, Canadian company. Okay. Uh, but I, I, I needed the, I, I should have had these on when I went out for a walk uh, two nights ago and I slipped and fell. I'm fine. Uh, but uh, <laughs> if, if you live someplace with snow and ice and you need to walk and you don't want to fall, um, get something like this. Joe, I've seen those, maybe not the ice trackers, but I've seen so many of those and I often wonder, do they really make a difference? I, I tried them last night. So I, I went out for a walk. I, I put, I, so I, I walked one direction with them off and I'm like, <laughs> yes, very, very slippery. I <laughs> uh, put them on for the, for the return trip. Like, and I, and I, I, uh, intentionally aimed for the iciest patches I could find and they were solid, super solid. So I can't speak to other styles brands and maybe our ice is better or worse than somebody else's. <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> In, in my limited testing, they did what they were advertised to do, which is to say they kept me vertical. So um, I there, there were, you know, when, when the snow is deep enough and thick enough, and especially when there isn't ice underneath it, well, the snow itself will give you traction and that's fine. But if there's exposed ice as, as there often is here, um, just walking can be, and, and you can, you can look up YouTube videos of people hilariously trying to get from point A to point B on foot on ice, especially if there's a little bit of a slope and it's just impossible because not, not even the best hiking boots are going to give you really good traction on solid ice. So, uh, something like this, I think, uh, could, could, could could save you from breaking a bone or being super embarrassed and having a video of you shown on YouTube for all, all eternity. So, yeah. <laughs> Good so point. These, these definitely do work. I've used a similar thing for the last couple of years because I I'm a runner and I'm in Wisconsin. So not a whole lot warmer <laughs> than yeah. you, Joe. Yeah. And basically from now until April, you can't run outside unless you wear these. <laughs> wow. So I, one last question I have to ask about yeah. them. I, I would assume that you have to be sort of careful to take them off as you come in the house because uh, being metal, they could mark up your floors or worse. That is absolutely correct. You you don't want to walk on nice hardwood floors or, or whatever you might have with, with these things. And, uh, you know, if, if you like if you're walking up on ice and they're great and then you're like oh well I, here's a here's a long stretch of, of pavement that doesn't have any ice on it that's going to be a little bit uncomfortable and like uh, what can i say um it's it, it's like it's like if you were wearing snowshoes or you're wearing skis well they're or, or, or skates you know they're they're appropriate for that particular surface so they're not appropriate for other surfaces uh so yeah you, you gotta you gotta whip them off as soon as you uh, come in the door but Again, these ones are really just like you, you, you rip the Velcro and then just boom, boom, boom. They're 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 just they're just stretchy and so they come off super easy. Good, thank you. Yeah, it's from what you're both describing, it reminds me of of the old style golf spikes that you know were metal spikes in your shoes. Um, you know, since to to prevent the damage to the the turf and the greens, now we've gone to more rubber, which still gives you a grip, maybe not quite as good. But it's definitely a lot more versatile, and you don't have to worry about taking your your spikes on and off when you're going into buildings. So, but yeah, that's 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 I love, and I love the fact we got double endorsement here from the cold weather guys. So nice, nice to be done. Okay, so they they the the uh, the rounds are going quick. Um, all right, I'm going to make a recommendation. For those of you who want to be creative, need to be creative, but are like me and have absolutely no talent with some of that stuff, um, I'm going to suggest that you go to depositphotos.com, buy one of their 
uh, programs, um, you can get like $100 for 100 images. Um, and so they're a stock photography company. But more than that, they are they, they have all kind of um, illustrator-based or vector-based uh, images or designs or pieces. And the great thing about that is if you buy the vector-based, you can then take those apart. So if you don't like the color of something, if you don't like you know a particular element, you can rip rip it out and then use what part of it you want, or you can just use it as a basis to get you know part way to whatever your personal project is, if if you have the, those particular talents. A lot of stock photography companies out there, and they're all great, um, but they aren't quite as affordable as deposit photos. And I have yet to go to deposit photos and do a search for something I'm looking for and not be able to find something that I can either use right right as it downloads or something that I can't modify to my particular use. And this is great if you do presentations or graphics projects or whatever, um, because it, for me, I mean, I could spend days trying to put something together that's basically very simple for someone that has those skills, or I could just download it from deposit photos, modify it to my, to, to my needs, and then slap it up in you know half an hour so go check it out again it's a it's a there it's a great value it gets even better value though if you have a regular need and just go with one of their subscriptions basically it's not it's it, it's something that you buy maybe it, it lasts for a year so i can get 100 images for 100 bucks for a year and i can use those images you know all on day one or all on day 365 um, the biggest thing is just keep in mind that you have, you know, how many images you have and when your time runs out. But it's, it's just, you know, again, if you have the need, it's definitely the way to go. That's two rounds, guys, already. Brittany, Joe, and Mike are back in the next edition of Mac Voices to finish up Mac Voices Holiday Gift Guide number four. And as you would expect, there are always some surprises. Until then, and as always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.